By spring 1953, the Korean air war was in stalemate. The US military, keen to capture the Russian technology, offered a huge reward and political asylum to any pilot that delivered a MiG to South Korea. No one had yet responded. But a daring escape attempt by a lone pilot would provide a last-minute twist to a war that seemed to have no end. By 1953, both sides recognized that the Korean War was unwinnable. After two years of negotiations, in July, a truce was finally signed at Panmunjom. But the Korean peninsula would remain divided and an armed camp. The fighting in Korea came to an end in July 1953, but of course the Cold War still went on. And during it, both sides were trying to get hold of one another's secrets, particularly in terms of military technology. The Americans were especially anxious to get their hands on a MiG-15. The Americans made an offer of $100,000, equivalent to several million dollars today, and political asylum for the first pilot who would defect and deliver a MiG intact. A 21-year-old North Korean pilot, Lieutenant No Kum Sok, an ardent anti-communist, was already planning one of the most spectacular escapes from the communist bloc. So my aim was that how to defect successfully and land on an American airbase so that I can ask for political asylum. So on the September 21st, Sunday morning, even before the breakfast, I got in the plane and took off to the north. And then the plane went to the north and I came down south and toward the Pyongyang, toward the east. And that's where I finally made the defect. It was not easy. In fact, that defection was harder than the equivalent to, say, a 50 combat mission. Now south of the demilitarized zone, he flashed into UN territory. Just four tense minutes after crossing the border, he spotted the US Kimpo Air Base and decided to risk a landing. Radar people missed me, and also anti-aircraft gunners I was afraid of, they missed me. He decided to land, when, to his amazement, he saw a saber coming straight towards him at the opposite end of the runway. Well, he hadn't seen me, so we landed together, both ends. And then we passed in the runway, and of course I knew he was there, he was coming down. But he hadn't seen me until we passed. Then after passed, of course he was frightened. But at the end of the runway, he stopped the engine and he jumped out. And he was wondering what kind of nuts landed from the wrong side. Commanders at the base panicked, thinking the war had started again, and scrambled every plane they had. Lieutenant No Kum Sok did not know of the reward. He just wanted to fly to freedom. The surrendered MiG-15 was taken to Okinawa, where it was dismantled and rigorously examined. Later, it was airlifted to the United States and underwent further exhaustive flight testing. The plane was pushed to its limits by America's top test pilots, Tom Collins and the world-renowned Chuck Yeager. I told Chuck Yeager that Tom deliberately going to spinning stall because this plane is uh, very uh, quirky. Sometimes you get out, sometimes you cannot come out. If you cannot come out, you have to bail out and you lose a plane. So he didn't put the plane to deliberate uh, uh, stall. Americans wondered uh, what a MiG-15 could be a supersonic. Then Chuck Yeager has proved that it's not a supersonic because he actually went up to 50,000 feet. He dived down, straight down, and he almost lost his life because uh, he was totally out of control. The control system didn't respond until he got down as low as uh, near 3,000 feet. And the chaser plane flown by uh, Tom Collins gestured, hand gestured him to bail out. But he didn't bail out, and he somehow he pulled out at 3,000 feet above the water. The test flights proved that indeed the MiG was an exceptional plane, but revealed no new supersonic technology. The defector, Lieutenant No Kum Sok, went to work for the U.S. government and became an American citizen. 